Hi everyone, welcome back to my series on development fundamentals for low-code developers. In the last video, we talked about HTML and how it's used to define the structure of a web page. HTML only defines the structure, but if we want to make it look good, then we need some CSS. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining what CSS is and how you can get started using it to make your Power Platform solutions look even better. I'll break it all down right after this. In our last video, we created this web page using HTML. We looked at how we could add headers, paragraphs, images, hyperlinks, and even list items. Now, as I mentioned before, HTML simply describes the structure of a web page. It doesn't alone give us a way to add any additional styling to the web page. So this site as is with HTML alone isn't something we want to launch. We need to add CSS to this page. CSS gives us a way to take this HTML and change the display of colors, the layout, the fonts, and even adapt the presentation of the HTML based off of the type of device you're on, like a large desktop screen or a mobile device. Any modern day website is going to have HTML like we're seeing here for the structure and CSS for the overall appearance and style of the site. So there are two main ways that we can take CSS and apply it to our HTML. The most common way that you're going to see on websites and applications that you use is through a CSS file, also known as a style sheet. So here's a very simple example of a CSS file. Now, when you're creating CSS files or working with CSS, you want to make sure that you're using some kind of editor like VS Code. So you can go to File, New File, and then in your Save As, there's a format called CSS. So that will create a new CSS file for you. And along with that, it will give you all of that helpful text, also known as IntelliSense, to let you know what is possible to do in a CSS file type. So you'll have a file like this, which defines the different styles that you have for this approach. And then you will associate it to your HTML file. So here in the head tag, we can add a link and use the REL property and let it know that this type of link is a style sheet. And then just like in our A tag, our link there, we can use an href and then just type in the location of our CSS file. So that will now bind the CSS file to our HTML. Now this is great and the recommended way of doing things in web development, but when we're talking about the low code world and the Power App side of things, we're wanting to use the HTML control, the approach of a CSS file is not supported in this HTML control. We have to use option number two, and that's called inline styles. All that simply means is rather than putting all of your CSS in a separate file like this, a style sheet, we're going to put that directly inside of our HTML. So I'm actually going to focus on showing you how to do it this way, the inline way, since that is what applies most to your Power Apps and low code application development. Let's walk through how we can apply those inline styles into our HTML. So we can apply styles to virtually any HTML property that we have. So this header, for example, if I wanna customize the look and feel of it, I can simply go into the header in between the less than and the greater than signs after the element name and start typing style. And then we'll do equals and then we'll have double quotes. So this style property, we can put any of the CSS styling that we wanna do inside this one property. And then you'll see the benefit of using something like VS Code because it's showing us right off the bat all of these different types of CSS styling we can apply. Now, the important thing to know about CSS is the structure of it. So everything that you're seeing in this list are called attributes. So these are the types of styles that we can apply. So they could be things such as margin. So we have different margins for top, left, right, and bottom. So if I wanted my header to be indented slightly, I might want to apply an attribute of margin left and define some styling here. So the attribute name will go here and you'll then put a colon. And then after the colon, you'll put your value of that attribute. So if I want a five pixel margin, I can just type five PX and there I have that attribute and a value assigned. And then we can just simply keep nesting different attributes in their appropriate styles by separating them out with a semicolon. So now I have a semicolon and I can add something else, say like font family, which is another attribute that we can put in there to customize the font face of the text in there. So I might want this to be uh, Lucinda Sands, for example, in that whole family. And then just do another semicolon and we might want to do font size which is the actual size of the font. So lots of ways that we can do this. There's the whole 
small, large, medium, larger aspect. We can do a percentage of the size of the page, or we can do it pixel based as well. So I might want this to be 40 pixels. And we can just rinse and repeat this for any of the other HTML elements that we have. We can add style. I can change the color of some text using some out of the box color and keep adding attributes and their values. And now this would work on our web page as well. So if I were to save this and look at our web page, we'll see some differences. So we can tell that our inline styles are working correctly. And what we have here with that styling will work inside of the HTML control in our Power App. Now, before I copy and paste this, I'm actually going to make a quick change. So if you recall in our HTML control from the last time that we looked at this, we have to wrap all the HTML in the Power Apps HTML control in double quotes. Now the problem is, especially as you start adding CSS styles in line in your HTML, is you're going to have a lot of double quotes in your HTML file. Well, if you have double quotes that are nested in double quotes, then that's going to cause the editor in Power Apps to blow up and give you an error message. So we have to do what's called escaping those double quotes. And all I mean by that is before you copy this over, you'll want to do a control F a find and replace. And you'll want to search for the double quotes in your HTML and replace those with single quotes. So I'll just do a replace all. And this will make sure that it's in a friendly format for the Power Apps HTML control to recognize your HTML and not throw any errors. Now, if you're wanting to use this for anything outside of the Power Apps control there, like just as a normal website like we had, you'll need those to be back in the double quotes. This is specifically to be able to appropriately copy this over inside of Power Apps. So let's add a new screen and we'll add a new HTML control and we will paste in our HTML and expand that out. And you see now we have our styles getting pulled over. That text is blue and the font family and the size of our header is changed as well. So knowing that we can easily apply this CSS to transform the look and feel of our HTML and have that work in the HTML control really unlocks a lot of capabilities to add in some bells and whistles to make our Power Apps user experience and user interface look better. So I'm gonna show you a couple things that we can do with this that I think styling wise have a lot of bang for your buck to make your apps look better in Power Apps. So these two things that you're seeing on this contact screen in my Power App are two easy things that you can do with HTML and CSS that take your Power Apps style game up a notch. The first one is a simple gradient effect. Now as simple as this is, we don't have an out of the box way to have a gradient like effect for our backgrounds inside of Power Apps. That's something that we can do, however, with HTML and CSS. The second is what's called a box shadow. So as you see, what I have here is actually just a gallery in Power Apps, but each of the items in the gallery is sitting on top of an HTML control that's using some CSS to create a box shadow-like effect. It's very nice visually. We're used to seeing this in a lot of web applications and mobile applications. This effect is used a lot to make your design more appealing. And now the really cool thing about each of these is that we don't have to know the specific ins and outs of HTML and CSS to make these happen in our apps. Because even though hopefully you understand the basic fundamentals of how to apply CSS and how it functions, but we certainly didn't go over every single attribute that we can apply in HTML and CSS and what it does. So starting with the gradient, one website I will recommend if you wanna do some kind of gradient effect inside of your Power Apps is cssgradient.io. It has an easy to use interface where you can drag and drop the color control to change the color of your gradient. And then also the starting point above here of where you want the gradient to start and stop. You just configure it how you want with this easy to use tool. And below you see it is producing the CSS for you that you need to apply to make it happen. So to use this in Power Apps, we simply copy this to our clipboard now that only gives us the CSS. We need some HTML to bind this to. So the only HTML-y thing that you need to know is something called a div. So I have an HTML control here in my app and I've added a property called div and that's just a way to create a section inside of HTML. So in our case, we just kind of have an empty section that's going to have some color coding going on. So now that we have that one div object for HTML, we're going to add our style property and we simply paste in, inside of the single quotes there, the CSS that we copied from our CSS gradient site. And the only other two things we need to know to add 
in addition to the div is specify a width and a height. If you just paste the CSS in as is, then you're not gonna see anything because we haven't defined how wide and how tall this particular element should be. So it will default to zero. So I tried to guess the width of my screen here in Power Apps, and then I adjusted the height accordingly and just kind of played with the numbers until I got the sizing exactly how I wanted it. And that produced this nice header with this gradient effect. Now for the box shadows. We have another tool that we can use to produce this CSS for us. The one that I like is this cssgenerator.org and they have a whole section for box shadows. So similar to the gradient effect, we can drag and drop these controls to specify the length of the box shadow, the blur radius, whether I want it to be really blurred or not so blurred. And then we simply copy the CSS here and we'll do the exact same thing that we did for the gradient. We'll add in an HTML control, which if you look at my tree view, I've added an HTML control inside of my gallery to have this effect. We're going to add a div again. We'll use the style tag to have inline styles, paste in the CSS that that website generated for us, and then again, specify the height and width that the element should be. And now we have this very nice and appealing box shadow effect for our contact cards. So hopefully this showed you just how easy it is to apply HTML and CSS with this control in your Power Apps and make them look so much better. All right, that's all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully now you have some great ideas of how you can get started using that HTML control in Power Apps to add HTML and CSS and transform your Power Apps applications. If you're enjoying this Development Fundamentals for Low Code Dev series, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and click the thumbs up. And if you have any ideas for other topics you want to hear, drop it on in the comments and let me know. And before you leave, check out some of these other videos I have on low-code development.